And so on to the legendary uh, triple clutch. Legendary in sort of many ways, good and bad really. First of all, the triple clutch is a single plate dry clutch. So different to most Triumphs, uh, multi-plate wet clutches. So the clutch does not run in oil. It runs outside of the oil, outside the primary chain case, and it's dry. So it's like a car clutch. In fact, it, the clutch plate is either the same or very similar to that of a Mini, uh, an old uh, BMC Mini. Okay, so if you think of the clutch, think more of a car clutch than a motorcycle clutch. Number one, single plate, dry. Number two, um, unlike again, unlike many uh, Triumph clutches, the uh, the clutch is opened by a pull rod. So the clutch is pulled open, not pushed open. On most uh, Triumph clutches, you'll have a, a push rod and that pushes the clutch open. But on a Trident, you have a pull rod that, that the clutch is pulled open. And then you have a clutch, uh, a bearing that goes in the middle of the clutch, which is one of those two. So those are the component parts. So we've got the uh, base plate. Then we've got the actual clutch friction plate. Then we've got the pressure plate. Then we've got the bevel spring. It's a single, again, another difference is a single plate, single spring clutch. Again, most Triumphs you'll have like, uh, like valve spring springs, about five or six or whatever of them around, but there's a single spring. And then you've got the cover plate. All right, those are all the parts of the clutch. Uh, other, so other strange things are that um, you, unlike on a multi-plate clutch, you can't adjust the tension of the spring. You know, on a normal multi-plate, you can screw those uh, springs tighter or looser, but you can't do that on a, on a Trident. Um, and another thing to note is that because it's a pull, the clutch is pulled open, this bearing sits in the cover plate and then the pull rod goes inside the bearing and it pulls and it actually pulls the clutch open on the main bearing. Now there is a problem with that is that the bearings are only des designed to take like radial, well, is that the right word, sort of forces you know going round and round but the clutch pull rod is pulling up is actually pulling the bearing sideways to open the clutch and all the force is going on the bearing and that isn't um, fantastic so what we've got is we've got a an uprated bearing which I recommend everyone to fit because it's like a slightly angled bearing so that when the clutch pull rod fits inside the bearing and if you look this bearing's got the inner race thick on this side and thin on that side that's because it's angled it's actually got a, the bearings aren't they're like taper roller bearings but they're set at an angle so the thicker side goes down towards the pull rod and then when the pull rod pulls it's pulling on bearings that are sort of you know designed to take a sideways thrust load so I'd always do that. And so so what I've done for that reason is I've drilled two holes in the cover plate. When this bearing goes in, it will fit in here. And it'll go that way up. Now the problem is, if you ever want to take that bearing out, now normally on a normal bearing, like this one, then the inner race, you can see the inner race and you can knock the bearing out. Now, on an uprated angled bearing, then uh, you can see the inner race, but if you then knock on the inner race, the inner race will simply come out because the bearings are at an angle, leaving the outer race still firmly in the pressure plate. And then you'll be struggling to get the outer race out because there's no way of getting to it. So if you are going to upgrade, upgrade as I've done, then the best thing to do is to drill two holes so then, if this bearing ever needs replacing, 
then you can get a drift in and knock the bearing out from the inside okay enough on that we'll come do it all in a minute so what have we had done so the first thing we've had done is we have had the pressure plate and the clutch basket or base plate i call it a clutch basket that has been machined so the surfaces have been machined flat i think um around here i will post a video or is it pictures i can't remember which of the what the clutch looked like when i took it out which is fairly scary okay we're going to uh, start doing the clutch so the first thing we're going to do is take the clutch apart and the clutch is uh, held down by these uh, 12 uh, 12 screws uh, with these uh, with these strange looking lock tabs on so we're going to bend up the lock tabs and then take these um, bolts out these are special bolts and i'll check them because they can stretch uh if people over tighten them and that so i'll have a look and if necessary we'll replace them but um yeah it's clutch time so i'm going to take these nuts off and then we'll start taking the clutch apart and see what's what right so we've taken the uh I've just uh, taken these uh, bolts out that hold the uh, hold the clutch together. Uh, the first thing to note, of course, is it's a very new locking tab. So obviously the clutch has been done pretty recently. So hopefully we'll find something good inside. So then we've got the cover plate that comes off. Actually, I know what I haven't done. Not, what I must do is before I take anything apart, I'm going to mark everything. So I know what position it's in. So if necessary, I can just put it back in the same place. So I'm going to mark it before I take it apart. There. So uh, I've marked the uh, cover plate and then the pressure plate and the base and the basket so that I can put these back in the same place if we need to. So that's the cover, cover plate. Then we've got the actual diaphragm dish diaphragm spring itself okay I'm just having a quick look at what's what then we've got the uh, this is the pressure plate oh not looking that good <laughs> no not looking that good at all I think of course it's been in storage that's why then we've got the clutch plate there me I'm sorry I'm looking at it and uh, oh dear the actual uh, clutch basket itself now it looks like there's been water water contamination possibly condensation something leak whatever um, basically there's clearly been water contamination uh, and that has wreaked havoc whether there's grease in there as well I don't know but um, uh, it's not great so I'm going to, so I'm just looking at the plate there. Yeah, so I'm going to send the basket and the pressure plate. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think that's got the new uprated bearing in it, is it? Not sure. Oh, no, that's a, no, it's a standard bearing, but it's a, it's a new bearing. It's not the, um, you can get uh, these uh, bearings that, um, you know they they take more sideways load and i don't think that is one but it's um obviously a new it's a new bearing in there but but it's a new standard bearing anyway um i'll be sending off the um pressure plate and the basket um to uh lumber jack who uh i know from the internet and he's going to be skimming these for me skim the the face of that skim the face of that and then also skim the top of the fingers because they it's very important that they're flat and parallel to the plate uh the basket so everything works okay i might also put in the um uh i, I might also put the uh, cover plate in just so we can put it in the lathe and spin it and see how um see how straight it is because sometimes you put these in the lathe spin them uh, yeah, sometimes when you spin them, you can find out they're completely out of true. So it'd be interesting to find out how how true it is. Okay, um, 
and I think we'll be getting replacing the uh, the uh, clutch plate as a matter of course. It looks pretty monkey that whatever. So um, and I'll also probably put an extra thick clutch plate in uh, in an effort to try and make the clutch lighter. Okay, but we'll be coming to that when we do all the uh, when we do the rebuilding. For now, that's the clutch apart, and I'll, I'm boxing it up and sending it off to have it machined. I can't remember what the video was like, but hopefully you've seen the video or the pictures of what the clutch looked like when I took it apart. A horrible, horrible mess. I think it had got water contamination by the look of it, and that had rusted the, the friction plate onto the basket and onto the pressure plate. Right, so the first thing I did, I needed to send this off to be machined because you have to have the clutch flat, you know, if it's going to work at all. It might not work anyway, but <laughs> I want it flat. So uh, there's a, a good uh, sort of Facebook friend of mine, Lumberjack, and, you know, massive thanks to him because my uh, local machine shop, uh, they will they will do this work, but they're a bit, you know, sometimes you send them stuff and then two weeks later you're in and they go, oh, right, oh, yeah, no, I forgot about that, you know. And so anyway, so I sent it off to Lumberjack and he's done a fantastic job. He skimmed the basket, he skimmed the pressure plate and he's also take, uh, skimmed the top of these fingers, as we call it, the fingers on the clutch basket, to get them all flat and parallel with the... Uh, bottom of the clutch basket that needs to be done so that when we put the cover plate on you know everything is flat horizontal and in line with each other because if things aren't in line with each other on these clutches they're not going to work another problem with these clutches isn't so much the clutch it's the actuating mechanism the actual uh, mechanism that, that uh, pulls the pull rod isn't great and it doesn't give much lift so the, one of the main problems with these clutches is they simply don't separate enough. You know, there's not enough lift so that when you pull the clutch in, it disengages, but only like half disengages. So there's massive drag. And so it's difficult to engage like neutral because the clutch is still dragging a lot. And also the clutches are very heavy, especially, you know, mainly because of these springs and things that you can't adjust, but we'll do our best with it. But that's another problem that the, the actual mechanism doesn't give you much lift. So you can't, so you have to have these, try, try and get them as flat and as smooth as possible. So that what lift there is to disengage the clutch, we use to maximum effect. So hopefully when we pull the clutch in, the clutch will disengage fully and, uh, and uh, give us a working clutch. Now, Okay, we've got a single one, a sort of diaphragm clutch or a bevel uh, spring or, okay, I think it's a bevel spring. It's similar to the Norton Commander, which does have a diaphragm clutch. So it has a similar spring to this as a single, a single spring like this. It's a bit different. I think it's a diaphragm spring, whereas I think this is called a bevel spring. Not sure. And similar to the Commando, right, if you want to get the clutch lighter, you actually put more pressure on the spring so it's a bit sort of counterintuitive so on the on the commando because that's multi-plate if you want to make this, the clutch a bit lighter you add springs now add a clutch plate because it's multi multi-plate add clutch plates and so the spring on the end actually gets flattened but which means it's under more pressure so you think well that's not working but the idea i believe is that um when it's um, sort of like um, released, then the, the spring is curved. And so there's a great amount of, it can exert, exert a great amount of pressure. But when, if you flatten that spring, then it can't, it can't uh, flex as much because it's flat. If it's already curved, then it can, it can create more pressure. So by actually flattening the spring out, it creates less pressure. So that's what you do on the Commando. You add more clutch plates and it actually makes the clutch lighter. Now we can't add more clutch plates because there's only one. But what we can do is we can add a thicker clutch plate and that's what this is. So um, suppliers have started to supply this slightly thicker clutch plate. I couldn't, I can't remember 
exactly how much thicker it is off the top of my head, but it is thicker. And again, so it's the same principle, same idea, but by having a thicker clutch plate, the spring will be compressed more, will be flatter, and therefore not quite as heavy. Because generally, unless there's a real problem with them, like they've got oil in them or something, these clutches don't slip, but they do drag, right? And they are heavy. But unless, unless you know, the clutch plate is totally worn out or there's oil got into it or something, they generally don't slip, but they do drag. So we want to do everything we can, A, to lighten the clutch uh, so it's not so heavy, and B, so it disengages as fully as possible. So uh, we've got that done. And um, also uh, Lumber, when he did this, he balanced the clutch because these, the pressure plate and the basket are heavy. And the pressure plate can go back on the basket in a number of different positions. So what uh, Lumber has done, he's put his, as well as skimming these, he's put them on the lathe and spun them until He's found the best position where there's uh, uh, you know as little vibration as possible uh, and they've been marked he's punch marked it so i know where to put that back on to give us the best uh, run we can so it's in line as possible okay so that's like the theory behind it so what we're going to do is i'm going to put the camera on the tripod and then we're slowly going to um assemble the uh the clutch and then then we're going to operate the clutch like on the bench as far as we can to try and see that we can get it to open uh, release uh, as early as possible but we'll do that step by step so that's like the basic workings of the clutch if you like now we're going to assemble it and see if uh, see how well it works and touch what it will be okay